For this video, we're going to talk about how to use Pinterest analytics to help you grow your profile as a Pinterest user. If you're a new blogger, if you're a new Etsy seller or a service provider or whatever you're going to do, and you can use Pinterest because Pinterest really helps you grow your traffic, especially with the Google update. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This Google update is really crashing down for a lot of niche sites. Okay. So I think Pinterest is where it's at. And just to let you know, make sure to grab my brand new ebook, 15 Genius Pinterest Secrets for Bloggers. It is direct for you to help you grow your profile. And these tactics work and they are secrets because no one's talking about them. All right, so let's go to Pinterest analytics. If you're new to Pinterest, this is for you. It's a Pinterest tutorial on Pinterest analytics so that you can understand it and how to use it to grow your profile. When you log into a your Pinterest profile, especially if it's a business account, which I suggest you do, you're going to have the business hub. This is something that's fairly new. It's, I don't know, maybe a couple years old, but it, this definitely wasn't available when I first started Pinterest almost a decade ago. I'm, I'm a dinosaur here. What this tells you is just gives you a snapshot of your profile. It gives you your monthly views, your follower count. If you want to become a merchant, I'm not verified because I don't want to be. <laughs> the pins that match trends in the United States. Now, I don't know if you know, but I am not in the United States. I am in Canada, but my audience primarily is from the States. So I want to market my stuff for them. And it's valuable for my Pinterest profile to be cataloged as US based. So I do talk about this in my Pinterest audit. It was a lie. So check out the Pinterest audit video. Just put it on while you're doing your laundry, making your lunch, whatever it is. Put it on your TV if you want. <laughs> and chill out to it at night because it's kind of long. It's over an hour long, but it will show you the things that you need to do to have a solid profile. So I just want to preface that. So this is the business hub. And like I said, it's just a snapshot. It tells me the trends right now in the States. If I can write about that, I can't really write about any of these cozy classroom. I'm not a teacher. I don't write about teaching stuff so much. And then these things, the solar eclipse, not my brand, not for me but that's okay. It's just telling me that these pins apparently match these trends. I, I don't know why. I, I keep telling you also that the blogging niche on Pinterest is so small that, that Pinterest is just trying to squeeze me in somewhere. And a lot of it is teacher-based because it is educational content that I create. All right, so it gives me that. And then it gives me my analytic overview and my top pins. So you can see my impressions, the save metric is slightly down. All of these are slightly down and that's normal for this profile. Each profile that I have is different. But this is just sort of your business hub. I honestly don't pay too much attention to it unless if I really just need to see a top bird's view of what's going on on my profile. I can quickly see my top pins if I want and then I can go to it. This is my analytics I can go to. But another way you can go to your analytics is to go to your business hub here, click on it, and then you can go to overview under analytics here. I would do overview because this gives you everything you need to know. All right, so the date ranges is typically 30 days a month, but you can set that 90 days if you want, just to get a better view if you want. You can set it for 60 days, whatever you decide. You know, for me, everything is trending downwards, but that's understandable. I tweaked my Tailwind schedule. My manual schedule is not consistent, so I'm just a little bit not on hiatus with this account, but it's not on my front burner kind of thing, but it will be soon for sure. These are my top pins that I can look at and then my top boards. And so with your Pinterest analytics, what I would look at is this area here of your top pins and I would sort by out bound clicks. Okay, this is important to you, especially if you have a blog and you are directing people to your blog or to your store, like an Etsy store, you want to see those outbound clicks. And this is where it is. It can show you the pins that have the most clicks to your blog. All right, I've are this these pins have been the top pins for years for me. So with Pinterest, realize that once you like locked in on a pin, Pinterest knows this is the pin, it's going to be your best performing pin for years to come. And you'll get those clicks constantly. You know, the, a thousand or something hundred clicks isn't the amount of clicks for that time. It's for the time period that I set, right? So it generates clicks every month for me. And so what I can do is pay attention to these pieces of content and see if I can write a new post about 
that topic in a way. I'm going to say this because this was a popular thing that I did, I'd say three years ago, where I would look at my top performing pins, not just on Pinterest, but on my Google Analytics to see what the pins are there. You know, you can sort through your Google Analytics to find the top pins there and then just create the same pin over and over again, almost the same title, everything. Okay, that doesn't work. And so if you are doing that, or if some other Pinterest guru is telling you to do that, it does not work for 2024. I have stopped doing that even on my better profile that I have that's constantly growing. I, I don't do that. This is what I do though. If I see a top performing pin is that I try to find another topic that I can write about or to create a pin about. So for example, this is a top pin of mine and it is termed ways to keep kids busy. I can find a different keyword for this to create a new pin and direct people to it. So these could be indoor outdoor activities right here for kids. So this would be a topic that I can create a new pin about. So I'm using Pinterest analytics for that information. I'm going to go to Canva and I'll show you quickly how I would do that. I would, let's see, find a pins like these ones here. So I'll do this one. I'm going to put my topic there. I'm going to find my post here. Okay. So here's my blog post. So I know what it is. It's 21. I have indoor toddler activities. Now this this is toddler, but that's fine. I can create another pin with that term, but I have it here. So I'm not like being clever here. Like this is what I'm doing. So I'm not hoodwinking them. I am giving them actual indoor and outdoor activities. So this was 21 clever, right? Big <laughs> indoor and outdoor activities for kids. So something like that. I'll change the color. I'll do to twins mommy. And then I will just find one of the activities that I have in here. I have crayons. So I want to do something a little bit different. So I have a fort. So quiet time. So maybe a fort might do nice. So if I go and do and do photos here and then do kid fort indoor, I'm going to make it vertical and then just see how I can put this in my pin if it makes sense. Okay, so something like that might work. I do need a box that does show that. Okay, so that's what I'm working with. That could work. Maybe do something like that. Okay, and then as far as the colors, that's good. Kids can be a different color. Let's do purple. Indoor can be a brighter pink. Outdoor can be a nice yellow. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Move this over. Make this a little bit bigger. Oops, got rid of that by accident. Okay, perfect. So now I'm just going to save it. All right, so it's as easy as that to create a pin based on my profile here. I'm going to upload a pin or create a pin here. I'm gonna add the link, the title, 21 indoor and outdoor kid activities. So I'll just change it slightly, kids and toddlers. Enjoy DIY. All right, then I'm gonna choose, see what I have here. Mom blogger tips, and then sensory activities. I should put that kindergarten activities and summer activities, and then just publish that. And there you go. So now I have a pin that's based on my popular pin, but it's completely different. Show Pinterest, like this is a new-ish pin with a newish topic to an older piece of content. All right, so that's how I would use that part of the analytics. But like I said, if I was to go in here and just look at my graph, I can look at these and see, well, how is this going to help me? I know that maybe I need to create more pins. I need to maybe uh, be more consistent and I need to pay attention to my traffic from Pinterest to my blog. Is my traffic going down with the impressions and the engagements and clicks going down as well? If that's the case, then I need to pump my actions into Pinterest because SEO and Google is a little bit volatile right now. I do want to focus on that. 
right? If I look at my niche website trends, I can see in the 60 day market, things are going up. And this is a profile where I don't use Tailwind. This is a profile where I'm not consistent. So there are going to be times where you need to be more consistent based on the profile. Like I mentioned, Pinterest does not favor blogging or business stuff. They do enjoy the make money content because that is finance and they do like teaching stuff because that is education. So there is some things that I can tap into to grow my Pinterest profile. But that's how I would use Pinterest analytics is to get a snapshot. How am I growing? Am I growing up? Am I going down? Look at the season. Is it because of the season? Is it because my consistency or lack of? Is it because the type of pin that I'm producing, right? Things like that, where I can look at my analytics to get just a bird's eye view of how to go forward with my Pinterest marketing strategy. All right, so make sure to pick up that book, 15 Genius Pinterest Secrets for Bloggers. It will help you figure out your profile to so that it starts growing. And if you want to learn more about your Pinterest marketing strategy, I suggest you watch this video next about Pinterest SEO. That's important too. Like this video, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you in the next video.